Hi everyone, welcome back again to my channel. We are now in lesson 9 of the Keys to Christian Growth, Building Our Life on the Word of God. Introduction In this life, we will all experience trials and challenges from time to time. As Christians, we will often even experience persecution for our faith. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Every day we face different situations and circumstances that require God's wisdom and direction. When we build our lives on the Word of God, we can be assured that we will remain strong in our Christian walk and prosper in those things that God has called us to do in life. See Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 to 8 and Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. The Bible also full of promises for all believers. As Christians, we must learn to build our lives on these promises so that we fulfill our full potential in Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. As Christians, we can tap into God's kingdom, resources, and privileges as we step out to follow His plan for our life. Building our life on the Word of God also helps to give us stability in a world which is continually changing and in which there is now much instability and uncertainty. The Bible also makes it clear that God has a great love for all people and that He is absolutely faithful. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, when we give our life to Jesus Christ, He promises to never leave nor forsake us. I will now share seven keys in relation to reading the Word of God that will help to see your life being transformed more and more into the image of Christ. Your light so shining before men, so that many others will be encouraged to come to Christ through your changed life. For some, our life may be the only Bible that they ever read. Number one, the importance of consistently meditating on the Word of God. As Christians, we are meant to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world so that through our lives, people are drawn to Jesus Christ. See Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 to 16. In a world full of negativity and ungodly values, however, it is often possible for those in the world to have a greater effect on our lives than us on their lives if we do not continually meditate on the Word of God. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Continually meditating on the Word of God is the key to maintaining godly attitudes and mindsets in our life and in prospering in all that we do in life. In John chapter 8, verse 31 to 33, Jesus himself said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In the book of Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 to 3, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. 
Number two, spending time in studying the Word of God. Studying the Word of God helps us to get a good foundation in our faith and to give us a clear understanding of our position in Christ, that we have come into a right relationship with God through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Studying the Word of God helps us to not deviate off track in our Christian walk and keeps us sound in our doctrinal beliefs, as well as equipping us to be effective in ministering to others. Studying and meditating on scriptures that relate to specific areas of weakness in our life, such as worrying, also helps us to gain victory in these areas. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. The Apostle Paul also wrote to the young pastor Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Number three, allowing the Word of God to speak to you. As we read the Word of God, we must be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit so that God can speak to us through the Scriptures. We all need God's wisdom for life. God speaks to us through His Word by emphasizing certain passages of His Scripture that relate to our current circumstances. A Rima Word We must be careful to never get into a daily religious routine of reading the Bible, but always read it with an expectation of God speaking to us. Whilst studying the Bible is very important, we must always be open to what God may be trying to speak to us about when we read His Word. As we do this, God will address areas in our life which we need changing and also affirm and encourage us during those times when we are experiencing trials in life. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, we also read about the power of the word of God to discern our heart motives. For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged word, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Number four, building our lives on the promises of God. The Bible is full of promises for all believers in every area of life. In the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 2 to 5, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. As all scripture has been given by inspiration of God, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, we can confidently put our faith and trust in all of the promises that are contained in His Word, the Bible. All of God's promises are available for every believer. He must simply claim and appropriate His promises by faith. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, 
For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Number five, being both hearers and doers of the Word of God. Though we may have a good knowledge of God's Word, if we do not also apply it to our lives and become doers of the Word, we will miss out God's best for our life and potentially stumble during times of trials and temptations. Jesus himself said, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Luke chapter 11 verse 28 Being both hearers and doers of God's word helps us to remain strong in the midst of the trials that we will all go through in life. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27 Therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house in the sand. And the ra rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Number 6. The importance of speaking out the word of God. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Speaking out God's promises in His Word over our life and future helps to build up our faith to receive miracles from God and to appropriate all that God has planned for our life. Because of fear and unbelief, a whole generation of the children of Israel failed to enter into all that God had planned for their lives. See Numbers chapter 13 and 14. Including scriptural promises in our prayers helps us to have faith for answered prayers when we pray. When ministering the word of God to others, we should also always endeavor to do so in the power of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. Before leading the children of Israel into the promised land, the Lord said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 Number 7. Allowing the Word of God to give us clarity and direction for our life. When we have need for direction of or clarity in our life, it is good to pray and seek the Lord with an open Bible. God is able to give us clear direction for our life through His Word as we seek His face. In the book of Psalms we read, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119 verse 105 Thank you for watching!